Welcome everybody to our new style of church yet again. We are uh, happy you're joining us this morning. We have um, a special announcement this morning that I'd like to start with. We have a challenge for you. Do people really know you? We're going to start this get to know me challenge and we'd like each of you to write a paragraph all about you. Then send it in either by Facebook or email. That's ashland.ac.church at gmail.com or U.S. Postal, which would be P.O. Box 169, Ashland, Maine, 04732. Or if you want to, if you want to make Bill and I feel a little better, record yourself reading it to us and send it in that way, either Facebook or you could, if you wanted to, send the video by an email. It's just a way for us to have more time together. And that is, that's going to be our challenge as we're distant from each other. And maybe even as we start getting back together, that could be something that we revisit in person. Just a way to help each other with community. So that's our special challenge. Keep that in mind. If you know somebody or if you're a person who needs food right now, the food pantry is going to be open Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. And just a reminder, we mentioned it last week. We're kind of done with it now, so probably it won't come up next week. But If you did your 40 days of giving for Lent to give to Penny Crusade, you're welcome to drop it at Katahdin Bank, leave it at the church, or just hold it until we get back together. I did want to give you a Penny Crusade update. As of 4-12, we had received for the month of April $254.40 for Penny Crusade, which makes our year to date $911.55. So you are being generous. There is going to be on Facebook and in the bulletin when you look at it, a link to a video for a mission moment that you can have at home. It is the Cabrizos of Agape House and they're sharing about their ministry. So that's something that will be fun for you since we didn't get to have a mission moment this month to do. The um, Those of you who do Monday Night Fellowship, continue with crafts and prayers. Hopefully that will change soon. We'll see what our governor says. And you can also see the bulletin for the update on where we are with our finances. Our worship service that's recorded on the YouTube link has regular music, which you can go, if you haven't already listened to the How From a Foundation, sing along with it, you're welcome to do that. But there's also extra stuff at the end that isn't listed in the bulletin. You can, as in all of this, you can skip the songs you don't like, play the ones you do, spend some time worshiping God. Our call to worship comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. God has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. I am well content with weakness, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, hopefully that will inspire you to keep going and take Christ's strength for yourself today. Heading on over to Pastor Bill. Good morning, and once again, just a reminder of how much we miss you guys. I know that uh, I'm sure you've missed just the fellowship time of getting together and sharing with one another and hugging each other and chatting and, and those kind of things. Uh, if you've been following my, um, my uh, messages throughout the week that I send out, uh, you will probably remember a few days ago, Mexican Medical sent out a request. Um, their concern as um, they deal with the people down in Mexico going through this COVID-19, their big concern is um, the financial impact of uh, the, the people down there. They don't have the government we have. They don't have the money we have. They don't have the ability to um, pay unemployment and to uh, send out uh, $1,200 per person to a vast majority of their populace. They just aren't capable of doing that. And we can't supply food and, and other things like that right now because nothing's going across the border. And so they recommend that if you want to help any little bit, any amount that you can send to them, please do that. Um, I, would, I would pray that you would pray about that, that you would think about that, that you would consider uh, how God would have you to help out uh, in that wonderful ministry that um, Craig and Christy and, and the rest of Medi- Mexican Med are doing. Uh, And so that is certainly one of our prayer requests. The other is uh, this coming week on on Thursday, we're going to find out 
what's going to be happening going forward with us. Are we going to continue on for a another couple, three, four weeks of staying at home? Or is the governor going to um, open it up? Uh, I heard this morning on the radio that a number of places, uh, a number of states started opening yesterday and more are planned over the next, uh, this next week. Uh, or at least a dozen are expected to begin reopening uh, some of their small businesses, their hair salons and things like that. So those of you who are in need of a haircut, pray, pray. And, um, uh, certainly, we want to be praying for those in our community. We've had a, a number who've had to um, quarantine themselves because of work situations or other things like that. So be praying for them. Continue to pray that this just stays south of us and, and we don't really get much of an impact. Uh, we are up to four confirmed cases in Arista County, and so, but one's already recovered. So please uh, just keep, keep praying. That's the best thing that we can do for one another is to pray. And, and also remember, um, as you're watching this, as the Lord touches you, if someone comes to mind, give them a shout later on today as you're watching this. Um, it's okay to take 10 minutes and, and call um, and just see how they're doing. So um, let's take a few moments. We're going to bow together. We're going to talk to that God of ours um, who is in control of it who has the power to overcome it, and um, who's giving us the strength day by day to get through this. Let's bow together. Father God, we do thank you. We do praise you because you are there. You're in the, the midst of all of this, Lord. We know that uh, in spite of the, the dangers and in spite of the fears and in spite of all of the other things, that you are at work, that, Father, you uh, protect us, uh, you're watching over us. Lord, you're, you're giving us the strength that we need day by day. And Lord, this is getting harder. It's getting harder and harder mentally, emotionally, even physically, Lord, to stay at home and not be able to go out. The weather this past week really didn't cooperate with us, Lord, and, and we're just really concerned. And Father, we think too of the long-term ramifications of this going forward. In our own country, we think about uh, so many um, parts of this. The small businesses, are, are they all going to be able to reopen? Are, are some just going to say they've had enough and be done? Uh, the people that are on unemployment, are they going to find work? Are there going to be the ability to get out and go back to work and do those things? How long is this slow ramp up going to take? And Father, what's the financial impact of all of the things that our government has done? What's that going to look like a year from now? Lord, we have all these thoughts running through our heads and more, Lord. And uh, for some, it's just the day-to-day -day existence of getting up and either being bored or whatever, Father. Um, guide us through as only you can. And Father, we do think of um, our fellow human beings around the globe. We know that other countries do not have a lot of the resources that we have. And Father, we think especially of those in, in Mexico as the Mexican medical uh, missionary group continues to work with them, continues to partner with them. Father, we pray that you work and guide and, and be with all of those leaders. Uh, be with them as they make plans to... Uh, to take monies across the, the, way, the border and, and uh, as they can or send money across the border, Lord, so they can uh, buy food and provisions for so many people who are in need. Father God, prick our hearts. Touch us, Lord. Um, burden us with, with their plight, Lord, and, and um, enable us, Father, to give uh, of what we have. Lord God, we think too of, of so many in our own country who have been sick with this illness. Many are in the hospital still today. Uh, many have died, Lord. And, and so we have families that are, are dealing with the loss of loved ones. And Lord, we just, uh, we continue to pray and we continue to ask that you uh, be with them. Father, we think of Edna today in the note that she sent to our church this week. Father, how she misses her Mac and, and how this COVID thing has really thrown a wrench into how their, what their plans were for, um, for bringing him home and laying him to rest, Lord. And we just pray that you be with, um, be with that situation, Father, for Cecil and, and his family as they, they are contemplating the same things as, as he has fallen asleep in you as well. And we just pray, Lord, that you be with 
with those families. Be with others, Lord, who are dealing with loss at this time. Father God, help us as we begin thinking about, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, and Lord, that means that we're beginning, our, th our thoughts are turning toward what's it going to look like as we begin to get back together. Guide us in that time. I especially pray for our leadership, not just in our church here, but in all the churches in our community and across the country and around the globe. Father, um, maybe this is a wake-up call to change how church has been done for so long. Help us, Lord, to know the best way to do that and to follow you. And Father, uh, now as we open your word and as we look at what you have uh, for us, what you've laid on my heart to, to speak to the people today, I pray, Lord, that you would just use the words that I speak. May they uh, touch and encourage and, and challenge us where we need it, Lord. And may we, may we be careful to give you the glory and the honor in all these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So our text this morning comes from Ephesians 3, and it's verses 14 to 21. Uh, I'm going to read that. I, I, uh, I'm actually going to put this a little bit more so I'm more centered instead of looking off to the left as soon as I can get a few things moved around here. Beginning at verse 14, it says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge." that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. In this fallen, sinful world, we are in need. We are in need of food. We're in need of water. We're in need of clothes. We're in need of housing. We need to be heated in the wintertime and cooled in the summertime. We need a way out of our fallen nature. We, see, we serve a God who is self-sufficient. Do we understand what that means? A self sufficient God. While many of us believe that we are self-sufficient, he truly is. He needs nothing. And there's a sobering thought in here that we need to get. That means he doesn't need us. When I say he needs nothing, that includes us. As his followers, we need always remember that he has chosen us. He chose to use his creation. He doesn't need us, but he wants us. We are also able. Every one of us listening to this this morning is able to do something. I've heard during this time, many people remark that they can't do anything to help out during the pandemic. That's not true. Maybe you can't sew or knit or crochet, but you can pray. You can send money if God gave you the extra ability. You can make phone calls. You can run errands. You can drop off groceries. You can go tap on a window. We are able. And that word able refers to the power that one has from inherent ability and resources. Able describes that which has sufficient or necessary power, means, skill, or resources to accomplish an objective. God is able to exceed our expectation. He's able to do exceedingly above all we ask or imagine. He's able to do the humanly impossible in our lives. It's good to re be reminded of God's ability to answer and to do all that we ask and request. 
He has the power and the ability to do all of those things. Therefore, let's be bold and let's be courageous in our praying. Let's bring what we consider to be our most impossible requests to God. Let's be bold to bring all our wildest dreams to him, for there is no danger of exhausting God's ability or power to answer. Now, it's okay if he says no, but let's be bold and bring them anyway. He might say no, just like our parents used to when we used to ask questions and ask for things. Sometimes it's in our best interest for him to say no. But it'll always be no if we never ask. His power and his grace are beyond all that we can ever ask. He's able to do what's beyond the bounds of possibility. He's able to do what seems to be unattainable. So we're going to look at this topic of of God's ability. He is able in three different ways. We're going to, I'm going to describe his ability. I'm going to talk about the dimension of his ability and the demonstration of his ability. So let's begin with the the description. How do we describe God's ability in his self-sufficiency? God is all-powerful, and God's power is infinite, and it's unlimited. He can do with power anything that power can do. Go back and think about Genesis for a moment. You want to talk about power. We have people in our country who are, who are rushing toward power. They don't even know what power looks like. God spoke and it was. From nothing came everything that we see around us. That's power. We're just blowing in the wind. God has to do the power to do all he wills to do. What he wants to do will be accomplished because he has the ability and the power to do it. He has the resources. He has the ability to work his will in every circumstance in the universe. Now, that doesn't mean if something negative goes on or something bad happens, it was his will. Remember, we're living in a fallen world, a world in which our enemy is being allowed to run around and run things for a while, just for a while. Kind of like leaving the kids home, mm-hmm. going out, going out on, on a date for the first time. Who knows what you're going to find when you get home? But God does. There are four categories of scripture that describe the ability of God. The first is that nothing is too hard for him. Jeremiah 32, 17, a, a, a wonderful passage that's become a wonderful song. Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. And in Luke 137, it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. So nothing is too hard for God. Number two, no one can stop God's plans. In Job 42, 2, it says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours is can be withheld from you. That's Job talking to God. Number three, he made all things and all things serve him. Now we look around the world and we might not think that's true. But Psalm 119.91 says, your laws continue this day according to your ordinances for all are your servants. All of us. Even those who don't believe that he exists are his servants. And finally, the fourth one is that God does whatever he pleases. In Psalm 115 and verse 3, it says, But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. We naturally try to limit the eternal and the absolute power of God to our own understanding. Remember the black box. I don't have it with me. It's out in the other room and I'm not going to go get it because the, the camera will stop. So I'm not going to do that. But remember the black box. That's how we understand God. We have to put him in some kind of limits because that's the only way our finite brains can calculate and, and determine and deal with an infinite God. But when we do that, when we limit 
his absolute power to our own understanding, our own concepts, our own imagination, we need to remember God is outside of that box. He's bigger than that box. He's infinite. You've got to take that box and go in infinite directions in, in 360 degrees. That should, first of all, encourage us to pray, and it ought to encourage us to believe when we pray. We're praying to the God of the universe. We're praying to the God who made everything. We're praying to the all-powerful God who could do whatever the heck he wants to do. Do we pray that way? I don't. Not every day. I'd love to sit here and say, I've got it all figured out. But you all know me that well. I don't have it figured out. But based on his holy and unchanging character, there are at least four things the Bible says that he cannot do. There are four things he can't do. He can't deny himself. He can't lie. He cannot be tempted by evil. And he cannot change the basic nature that he has. And I've talked about those on some of these sermons when I've talked about these abilities of God before. So I'm not going to go into any details. In short, God will never act contrary to his own righteousness, to his own holiness, and to his own unchanging character. So that's the description. That's how we describe his ability. Now we're going to look at the dimension. How big is it? How great is his ability? First, he's able to save to the uttermost. In Hebrews 7.25, it says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus took our place that we might have his peace. He took our sin that we might have his salvation. When God saves us, our sins are forgiven and they're forgotten forever. It's done. Christ's blood covered him. So he is able to save to the uttermost. He's, secondly, he's able to help them that are tempted. And we're all tempted. Hebrews 2.18 says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Jesus understands he was there. He was tempted in the wilderness, just like the scriptures say, just like every one of us is tempted in our lives to sin. He was tempted in those ways. And he remained sinless, but because he was tempted and he, under, he can understand what we're going through. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the times of challenge and controversy. And if that statement is really true, then we are living in the midst of one of those times in our lives where we really are measuring the measure of a, of a man, of a person. Third, he's able to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3.21 says, He will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. God can take that which is even of no use and make it wonderful. How do I know that? I look in the mirror every day. Because he took me dragging and screaming to be a pastor. I know in my own life, I see it every day. And I see it in all of you. But it's not even us as individuals. It's the circumstances we find ourselves in. He's able to subdue, subdue and use it all. Number four, he's able to deliver from the fires of life. Daniel 3.17 says that if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's who was saying this. The devil will always scare us with the fiery furnace. 
threatening us that unless we bow, we will burn. And whatsoever fire of affliction we may be passing through, we need to remain steadfast in our trusting God for deliverance. And for some of you, this may be, this may feel like we're going through hell together. And we are. But it's not permanent. It's not forever. And God is on our side. Number five, he's able to build us up. Remember, this is still all of the the size of his ability. He's able to build us up. In Acts 20, verse 32, it says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Living and praying in the spirit will cause us to be built up in Christ, in faith and in his word. And to go along with that, Jude one twenty says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Are we having bad days? Get down on our knees. Perhaps I should have done that the last couple of weeks when I've been working on some plumbing in the house. <laughs> Get down on my knees. Because there's nothing more frustrating than something that doesn't want to work the way you think it should work. Number six, he's able to do above our expectations or imaginations. Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. One of our verses that I read this morning. He cannot be predicted or limited. Think about that. Can we predict God? I don't want to try. I don't want to.